hundred X incoming. There is a massive upcoming catalyst that nobody is talking about, but we're going to put you on early to it. Welcome to the bean pod. This is your place for all things, stocks and crypto from beginner tips to expert picks. Use this as fuel for your investing journey, because when you're in the know, your money will grow. This episode of The Beam Pod is sponsored by BitGet. BitGet is the most user-friendly and secure crypto trading platform for both beginners and experienced traders. BitGet is the best place to not only trade Bitcoin and Ethereum, but also all the small cap gems that we discuss every day. With 24 seven customer support, leverage trading, and a wide array of other advanced features, BitGet sets itself apart from every other centralized exchange. Through Beanstalk's official partnership with BitGet, you'll receive 15% off all trading fees when you sign up using the referral link in the description. All views expressed by speakers on the BeanPod are solely their opinions. You should not treat any opinion expressed on the BeanPod as a specific inducement to make a particular investment or follow a specific strategy, but only as an expression of their opinion. This podcast is for informational purposes only. Welcome to the Bean Pod. This is Shane, aka the Jolly Green Investor. And this is Josh, the Nifty Investor. Today, we're going to be revealing a small cap gem altcoin that is working perfectly in a massive catalyst that no one is talking about yet. The partnerships, when you start connecting the dots with the team members, fully docs team, for this small cap gem, who they're working with. And piece it together with the upcoming regulations that nobody's talking about yet. This puts this project in the perfect spot and ticks all the boxes for a small cap gem. For sure. So the project we're talking about today at time of recording has a market cap of under 10 million. Yeah. Now, when you look at, as you said, the team, some of the partnerships, the technology, they could not be placed any more perfectly to take advantage of what we think could be the next huge wave of narratives and regulations that are going to be coming into play very, very soon. So this is an episode you need to watch until the end. So the DeFi market currently sitting at around $140 billion in the market cap. There is $120 trillion worth of traditional finance money that needs to come into this DeFi market. Mm -hmm. This project is the gateway to onboarding institutional money into DeFi. It's going to serve as the regulatory shield for Mika regulations, which nobody's talking about yet, but I guarantee you will start hearing about these in the upcoming months, and the SEC for all things real world assets, DeFi, DPIN, GameFi, all while preserving your keeping you anonymous with ZK technology. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so look, th there's going to be an, a brand new regulatory framework for crypto coming out in 2024. Look, a lot of positive things have happened for crypto in 2023 and 2024. We have Bitcoin's bot ETFs. We have institutional money without question flowing into crypto. Now what we, you know, a lot of people are going to say, oh, and regulations, blah, 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 KYC. Look, in order to continue this money flow from traditional asset managers and venture capital funds, hedge funds that have billions, if not trillions of dollars, we need this new regulatory framework from Mika, which is Europe, and SEC. We need this new regulatory framework. And there's two main things that these regulations are going to focus on. One, KYC verifications, whether you like it or not, they're coming. Now, this is mostly going to apply to exchanges. You know, decentralized wallets, I think, are always going to remain probably mostly anonymous. But KYC, it's know your customer. You're going to have to verify yourself. So we're looking for projects that are offering seamless solutions to allow people to KYC to exchanges. And number two is anti-money laundering technology. Because one of the biggest things that these old, very, you know, outdated, antiquated senators and stuff, they say, oh, look, crypto is only used for money, for money laundering. Well, if we can solve that problem and say, look, we have these anti-money laundering solutions technology built into crypto to prevent people from laundering money in crypto and also to help crypto exchanges and projects to identify people that are money laundering, if a project is doing both of these, that is a gem. And guess what? We found the project that is doing both of them. Yeah, this means that all Web2, all Web2 all web companies looking to get into Web3 will have to act in accordance with these laws, anti-money laundering and KYC. And this is one of the only products out there that provides both in an all-in-one solution across 
several different chains. Mm. There's some interesting things here with the team that I think we can start to talk about after we reveal the project, yep. who it's incubated by, and a number of other things as well. For sure. So the name of this project, the name of the small cap gem for today's episode is called Purify Protocol. The ticker is UFI. And yeah, look, we we only recently just discovered this project. Again, you know, we were trolling social media all day. We're reading articles. It just kind of came across our plate. Now, the more we've looked into it, we said, look, we need to get this out to the people right away because I think these regulations are going to come in hard and Purify is sitting at the perfect position. So this is incubated by Hacken, which is a top three auditor in the space. It's well known, you know, all the big chains use it, which has also helped with this to become one of the smart contract integrations where it's the only project, the only project, less than a $10 million market cap. That allows an integration of all around compliance directly within smart contracts. So that means it can work with any blockchain. Currently, it's already integrated with uh, anything EVM, Ethereum, near protocol. And they have plans to go into Cosmos, Polkadot, and Solana. Yeah, that's huge. Absolutely so, massive. Mm -hmm. And I think one of the things when we started researching this project personally that really said, okay, look, this is something we need to really get into yeah. is the new partnership that they formed. So Purify Protocol has announced that they're taking on a consultancy role for the United Nations Office on Drugs and Crime to fight cybercrime and blockchain crime. This is huge. What would be the... And we're talking about the United Nations here. Yeah. One of the most powerful organizations in the entire world. And again, we're talking about Purify with a market cap of less than 10 million. What would be... An, are there any other projects that are working with the United Nations on crypto? So the only other product that's working with the UN at the moment is Algorand. Algorand. What's the market cap of Algorand? Like two, three billion or something, five right. billion. Okay, so compared to PureFi as an altcoin, small cap altcoin gem, that is very interesting. It is very interesting. And when you look at their CEO, uh, Slava Demchuk, he's an advisor for the European Commission. <laughs> the European Commission draws up the proposals for European legislation. Yep. So we're talking UN, we're talking... European Commission, we're talking drafting up crypto laws so that projects and traditional finance money stays within compliance. Who's building the product for this? This guy is also the vice president of the Blockchain Association in Ukraine. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah, it's quite the connections. I mean, look, we always, we're always onto narratives early. We're always looking for headlines from Web 2 from the traditional world and see how they're going to affect Web 3. Now, think about this. We've already established that Purify has insane connections. United Nations, SEC, all the you know European framework. Look at what happened in the latest World Economic Forum meetings. They are putting a massive emphasis on KYC and AML, which is anti-money laundering, again, in blockchain regulatory reports. All the reports that came out of the World Economic Forum have said, look, they're going to do this. Now, let's, let's rewind a little bit to the World Economic Meetings from the past two years. They gave us a preview of what was to come in crypto for the coming years. A couple of years ago, they said, look, World Economic Forum is big on tokenization of real-world assets. Mm. Boom. We saw that become a massive narrative, and we were early to it. Now, this year, during the World Economic Forum, they said, what are we focusing on? KYC and anti-money laundering and crypto regulatory framework. So I'm selling you this. In our personal opinion, it's not financial advice. We think this is going to be the next massive narrative in crypto, and Purify seems to be in the correct spot. Already involved in Europe's biggest regulatory crypto landscape, Mika, which you're going to hear about, and advising the EU Commission. Now working with the United Nations, who is the World Economic Forum's biggest partner. Piece it together, mm -hmm. people. Yeah. I mean, we have. Yeah. Which is <laughs> probably why this sub $10 million market cap project has huge partnerships. Mm -hmm. They're working with Casper Network. That's huge. Future-proof blockchains. Future-proof, what's coming, what's coming in the future allows these you know, DeFi and traditional finance to adjust accordingly. They also have a partnership with the European Blockchain Association. They have partnerships with Chain Analysis, which, which is valued in the billions working with governments and financial institutions, the U.S. government and Barclays. Huge. So wh why do you think these partnerships are being formed, that you can see the infrastructure and, and the connections are there? For sure. Well, I mean, it's, it's a no-brainer once you actually go into their website and look at the four main pillars of their platform. So quick run through. First, of, as we've been talking about, the anti-money laundering technology. So what this is, it's, a, it's have a widget 
It integrates with dApps. It allows projects to assess the risk of the user wallets that are using their project. It gives like a risk score. Are, are these people connected to money laundering? All that kind of stuff. Then as we talked about before, KYC, know your customer. They have an easy integratable solution to meet regulatory requirements. Easy, it's gonna make it very seamless for people to basically you know, upload their IDs, get access to DeFi, all that kind of stuff. They have a dashboard they've built that's gonna allow everyone, both the users that are um, have all their wallets and also the projects that are integrating with PureFi to say, look, what is, what is going on with all of our wallets? Is there risky users here? And I think what's what's actually one of the most interesting parts in the fourth mem- fourth kind of pillar of their product offering is the sanctions checklist. Mm. So as more sanctions are brought in and out of crypto, you know, say for example, if people in the USA can't uh, get involved in ICOs, right? You can't get involved in crypto pre-sales technically if you're in the United States. S- this is just an example of some of the many, many sanctions that are going to be brought in, maybe going to be taken back in crypto. So once you have your, your KYC and your wallets are all connected, you're going to use projects are going to be using PureFi's sanctions checklist to say, look, do we have people that are not allowed to be here? Are we meeting regulations or are there users that are going to potentially expose us to lawsuits and and all that kind of stuff, right? So when you look at KYC, anti-money laundering, the dashboard and the sanctions checklist, you can see why the technology that PureFi is building is going to be so important in the new world of crypto regulations. Yeah, like the Web3 SDK to have like an easy API plugin for current websites to make it seamless for these Web2 companies to transition to Web3. The team has already launched three other successful projects in the past or products in the regulatory space uh, before launching PureFi. So they have a, they've been gaining a reputable brand in the regulatory tech space. They launched an AML bot, which is compliance. Uh, they have AML Safe, which is a multi-chain wa- wallet for AML. And then crypto PL, which is a financial accounting for traders. So this probably, when you can see that they've built projects in the past that are successful, they have all these connections with some of the biggest players in the space who are creating the laws for all of crypto globally. And it makes sense why they've received grants from Near Protocol and Casper Labs mm. and Aurora and Everscale and have a partnership with Polygon ID. Yep. It, they're making all the right moves here. Look, I mean, PureFi seems to be sitting at the perfect crux of bringing in all of these real-world assets money, you know, the tokenization narrative, the regulatory narrative. There's hundreds of trillions of dollars that are potentially going to be bridged over from centralized finance to decentralized finance. We just need the proper technology to meet the incoming regulations from Mika and the SEC. And with all the connections that PureFi has and the technology they've built, this is not a project that I'm going to be betting against. I know we're both personally invested in this project. This is not a sponsored episode. For anyone wondering if it's a sponsored episode, we're going to declare it. This is not sponsored. We just personally invested in this project. I think it's a gem. I invested in it because I also see the token utility. Um, So you're going to need the UFI token for service accesses. So you got to stake the token to purchase the services. They have tool access, so it's a PureFi subscription. Right, so you think of all the different traditional finance co- companies coming in, the access, to the tools that they're going to want. Yep. Uh, re- any revenue converted is actually turned into UFI, and then distributed amongst the treasury and foundation. Love it. And then there's farming and governance. Uh, tokenomics apparently is fully vested come July 2024. Cap supply of 100 million, so no more tokens to be released. There's a lot of green flags here in this project. Perfect timing with when Mika regulations come out. I think they're building something pretty special here. As always, we're putting you onto the best altcoin gems early on this show. If you have any questions about PureFi, let us know in the comments. Jump into the Discord. Happy to ask and engage in there. And if there's any other altcoin gems you want us to uh, you know, do a, an episode like this on, let us know in the comments. And then tune into the next episode. Because that one is going to be a banger. All views expressed by speakers on the Bean Pod are solely their opinions. You should not treat any opinion expressed on the Bean Pod as a specific inducement to make a particular investment or follow a specific strategy, but only as an expression of their opinion. This podcast is for informational purposes only.